Hey guys, I'm here with Pengu, who with his team just won another six invitational. Congratulations, so excited for you. Now, how does it feel to bring home yet another grand title? I, I, don't, I don't think it ever like kicks in until the day after when you wake up in the morning. Um, but by my voice, you can tell that it did hit in a little bit. Um, the first thing that kind of struck my mind is that the legacy that we built now, winning two majors in a row, or the, actually three in a row, going to the Invitationals, the Paris Major, and Invitationals again. I think we're just happy that no one can really take this away from us, right? Even if we lose the next tournament or in a year we lose the tournament, what we've done the last two years in a row is unthinkable, I would say. You guys have created an amazing legacy. Now, going into this tournament, some people were kind of like, you know what, I hope GTU don't win. They win yeah. so much. So what would you say to those people now? I mean, everybody, every, every community, every fan, or like every movie needs a villain, right? And G2, we were the heroes once, once upon a time, when we first came around. And now, because we've been around for so long, we're the enemies, right? We're the bad guys. And while we do have fans, we also have people that want to see us lose, and most importantly, see other people win. And Empire got really close to that. The first map, playing 22 rounds. Goga, just sitting and waiting, watching. He's got Kanto right next to him. Where are Scyther and Shepard? As they're going to have to hurry, but Shockwave. Already down, Scyther sprints right in, takes out one, he loses a bit of HP, but he's traded off, and there you finally have it! EG has been really close to it before, and of course Liquid, the only team to beat us ever in a big stage. Um, so, for now we'll stay the villains, but maybe one day we'll be the heroes again, once we start losing. The fact that you guys came in as defending champions, how did that impact how you like prepared or mentally prepared? I think it impacts our opponents more. I think that we went into this, like we're fifth in Europe right now in the Pro League scene, so we're terrible on paper, right? We've been saving strats on purpose, we've been trying to innovate ourselves like really restrictively and showing as little skin as possible. So going to this tournament, we have a variety of maps that we haven't exposed yet, uh, less study on us. We look bad on paper, and most importantly, I think all our opponents are extremely scared because we are the winning champions. So we don't really care too much because we know that we're not that good. But other teams are like, oh my god, they're so good, right? And I think the pressure gets them on stage. I was talking to Eunice the other day, actually, and he was saying how it's really important for him to stay humble and never expect to win. Yeah. Did you kind of come in with a similar mentality or you're like, you know what, I'm confident. We're going to win this. I think after winning quarters, we're like, okay, we need to win now because it was such a tight game against SSG. Uh, we knew for a fact we are going to beat Reciprocity, simply because of experience. Um, the final, I think, was the biggest challenge for us in quarterfinals. Um, I think our personal goal individually is always to make quarters, because that way you play on stage, and at least you get to you know, experience a big stage, because if you've gotten groups, you don't get that. Since we're winning champions, I think everybody had like a secondary goal, which is supposed to defend the title in the final. I'm not going to say we're okay with losing, but if we were to lose, it would be the final. Well, let's talk about that final match. In the finals, you met Empire. Were you surprised to have met them in the finals? Yes and no, right? They're the new powerhouse. I think the commentary was like 100 days ago during Challenge League. Now they're the final of the biggest tournament ever against the best teams in the world, but like how? No one really knows. But we are actually the only team ever to beat Empire. We beat them in Dreamhack. We drew against them in Pro League recently. So on paper, we are the only team or the only team that should beat them. And they happen to face us. And we know for a fact that the only team that they do fear is also us. So we kind of went to the final with like the mentality. And then the first map going so close for so long. And then us winning in the end, I think that gives us a massive sweep in terms of the long run. Looking back at this tournament, was there a moment where you felt, oh, we weren't, we're not going to win this? <laughs> Quarterfinals against SSG. Um, Max was on Clubhouse. We lose it. I'm like, shit. I'm tilted, right? What do we do? Sorry. Um, <laughs> And they just played so well, and like their playstyle is so innovative and new and fresh, and it's not something that we have in Europe. So, props to them. We played them at DreamHack in December, and we knew that they were good, but not that good. I didn't think we would lose, but I did think that if we were going to lose, that would be the game. Now, going back to the finals match, you guys did win three to zero. If you had to choose an MVP for the series, who would it be? I think Kento. It's Kento's first like invitationals. Uh, we actually beat them in the quarterfinals last year when he was an end, so he's on a winning team this time, of course. He dropped, I think, 19 frags on border. He's had a really good showing. He's, I think he's topping kills in Europe. He's over joystick in the Pro League season. And obviously, Kento is our main fragger now, and he's doing a really good job at it. I have to ask, this roster is so dominant, so strong. Tell me what it's like to play with these guys. What makes you guys so good? Um, well, the thing is, this is like the, I think this is the hardest to work with roster in the world, probably. We have very big personalities, myself, Fabian, and Junas. We discuss a lot, we are hard on each other, criticism, and I would lie if I didn't say that we almost fell apart, like very, very short before going here. And also, again, almost losing quarterfinals took us a lot, like we had like an hour long meeting 
like raising a voice like we are bitterness, but what are the issues, right? Recognizing where the faults are. So we're hardworking. We're really, really like, I would say critical on punishing and be constructive with criticism. Um, and that's why we keep remaining up good because like, every time we do bad, we're like, oh yeah, what are the issues? Who's messing up and how do we fix it? But at the same time, we have breaking points where we almost fall apart because we are so critical. We're like, you are doing bad, you can do better. And you can only really push certain people so far. But so far we haven't broken yet, but we're definitely bending a little bit. You're seeing matches go closer and closer now. Do you feel like the level of competitiveness have increased in the past year? 100%. If you look at regions as well, APAC showing up strong for this tournament. Fnatic and no rank in particular. Mantis were actually, I think, the third closest into beating us. Like, HC was closest than Empire and Mantis, and Mantis is like the bottom team, APAC team. So, I would say game is getting tighter, regions are getting tighter, and teams are getting tighter. But one thing we can take away is that, that we're playing the same patch here as Rio Finals three months ago. So the development of the game and the strats are kind of stalling out right now. I do think that there's a bigger skill cap because of that, like our smaller story where the worst teams are catching up. And then after the tournament, we get new operators, we get new maps, we get new, new strategies. And then I do believe that better teams will like, get a gap again. So I think that's one of the reasons. All right, perfect. Now, just to wrap it up, you know, the hammer looks really heavy. Are you guys going to ever get tired of carrying it? I mean, we got a shield now, we got two hammers, so we just need like a horse, we could fight. But no, I mean, it's 18 kilograms. It's actually uh, lighter than last year, because last year all the weight was in the head. Now it's like balanced. So last year it was like, yoink. And this year you can actually lift it. So no, we're, we're, we're good to fight. All right, thank you so much. Congratulations again. Thank you so much.